thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, uh, Ricky Camilleri. Uh, this is great. We've got someone that's really amazing here. Last year, television audiences flipped for a hit woman with an incredible sense of style and flamboyant sense of humor. Our next guest, Jodie Comer, created an iconic character with Villanelle, and her and co-star Sandro are back for season two of Killing Eve, and it is fantastic. Let's take a look. Sometimes when you love someone, you will do crazy things. It's oh so cool. Why are you and Villanelle so interested in each other? It's, oh, so it's instinctive and it's flamboyant. And so wow, you look amazing. Can I take a picture of you for my Instagram? No, no, of course not. Get a real life. If she's alive, you need to find her. Swell, you almost have this a is out of control. <laughs> it feels like I'm I'm losing my mind a little bit. Any ideas where she might have gone? Any feelings? No, no feelings. Cross your heart and hope to die. Everybody, please put your hands together for the amazing, <laughs> incredible. Villanelle, Jody Comer. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me back. Oh, congratulations. This is incredible. Last time you were here, I think the show had maybe just premiered or was maybe like a few episodes in. Yeah, maybe it was the first episode. Yeah, and mm -hmm. like it had gotten pretty good reviews, but by the end of the first season, it had completely blown up and anybody who likes television had totally flipped for the show. What was it like watching that happen? Well, I think it surprised us all. I mean, we all had confidence within the scripts and, and the cast and crew, but you just cannot um, guess how a show's going to go down. So it's been incredible to just, like, live in this moment and and, uh, and celebrate it. Yeah. Um, you know, going... How much do you love playing this character, first and foremost? Probably too much. Too much? Yeah. I mean, every... If there is such a thing as too much, I don't know. Every actor likes playing a villain in some way because they get to sort of do all the things that you're not allowed to do in reality. Um, but you are so, so good in this part. And you have created what I think is an I iconic television character. Thank you, know, you. Maybe that word's overused, but I really think... It's you know, a big... I mean, I, I kind of felt that it was something special when I started seeing... Villanella's Halloween costumes. I was like, whoa, like when when does this ever happen? And, and you know, if someone would have told us that before we'd done it, we would have probably told them to shut up politely. But um, yeah, I think that was also a huge moment of like realizing just how how big this show and this character had, had gotten. Mm. Do you find, I mean, actors always talk about having to ground themselves in the character or find ways to ground the character. Do you look for that with, with Villanelle or do you look for ways to make her bigger and more, and, and, and more flamboyant and fun? I think, I think the latter. I think um, what I really discovered as my confidence grew with her was the more I pushed it, the more fun I had. And I think the more fun the audience has. Um, you know, some people are just bad, um, unfortunately. But what we've definitely enjoyed exploring within season two is, you know, these moments where the audience feel like they understand her or they're getting through to her. And then she does something that completely contradicts that. Um, We've really kind of delved into those moments. Um, and I've lo a lot of that is kind of explored through the characters that she has to put on for her kind of um, missions. Um, so that's been a really um, exciting part of series two. Well, you see even in the first, I don't want to give anything away, even in the first two episodes that I've seen, is by putting Villanelle in a situation where she is in peril, no matter how villainous she is, you root for her because she's kind of our anti-hero and kind of our, and our main character. And as long as she, we're with her and she's smarter than the person that's against her, we'll watch her kill anybody. Yeah, I think, so. and it, but I also think, like series two, we see her like so um, vulnerable, like a different vulnerability, like uh, especially physically, like she definitely fears for her life, and I think her life is very much in danger, and it's the lengths and extent she will go to, um, you know, the people that she uses along the way to um, make sure that is is salvaged. Are you guys done shooting series two? Yeah, set? yeah, How we finished ago? it in December. 
Yeah. So you've you've had this story. You've sat on the entire story now of series two for about what, like five months. My maths is terrible. Yes. Well, no, I mean I don't mean like getting the script. Oh, if sorry. We're, if we're going to discuss, like, like, <laughs> then my math might be terrible too. But I think it's actually right. Yeah. Five months since. Oh, I'm proud. Yeah, a long time. I'm a proud. But, but the thing with series two as well, we didn't really know where the story was going the way through. Um, you know, all the way through, it was kind of every script was kind of a surprise. Oh wow! Um, but yeah, but I find a lot of people I speak to don't really want to know any secrets. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone, especially my dad. My dad's like, because I say to my dad, I've got the scripts there. Like, if you want to read them, and he's like, no. Like, you know, I want to wait and see. Wait, what does see. your dad think of the show? He loves it. He's yeah. watched it like <laughs> sixteen times. Like, I often like walk <laughs> in the living room, and he's he's watching it again, and I'm like. <laughs> Dad, I like but him. I love him for that. Like his home movies are you playing a psycho? Yeah, like. he really enjoyed Killing Eve, like the, the the whole tone of the show, and just I think ultimately, you know, the show doesn't have this big message. It's for people to have fun with, and hopefully that's, you know, people. It's for enjoyment. And well, that said, there is something liberating I think about uh, about Villanelle and the way that she is incredibly, f she's extremely feminine, while yeah. at the same time being villainous and psychotic which is something we we rarely see femininity is usually mm. uh associated with purity or it's associated with innocence rather than something yeah. that is the complete opposite of that i think that's totally true and i think also you would usually see this role played by a man and and the fact that even that is just switched up is 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 surprising and, and fresh to people it's just a new a different a new approach you're also not given that many like annoying villain lines you know like she's sharp and she's clever but it's yeah. not like you finish a situation and it's like parking's a bitch and then you get out of it or <laughs> yeah. something you know you're actually like no. a, that's actually a direct quote i think from a robert altman movie sorry <laughs> uh but there, there she is she's the lines and the humor is more rooted in the conflicts between the characters yeah and i think it's also in the very what Phoebe and Emerald are, are so great at is the finding like the really mundane things in life that we don't actually think that much about like for instance one moment within series one was when um they were outside the Russian prison and and she didn't want to go in and and uh, Constantine was telling her that she has to and then she like licks his hand mm -hmm. and I remember we got the sides through and me and Kim looked at each other and we were like what <laughs> and then like the great thing about working with Kim, he's like, let's just do it. Let's just try it and see, like, see how it comes out. And then we did it, and we were like, genius! Like, because it's these silly things that we do with the people who are closest to us, and we don't realize that we do them. Not that we lick everyone's hands, but you know these funny little always licking hands. Yeah. It's just my thing. It's you like know these little things that we do, and we don't think anything of. And then actually, it's those like little nuances that people really enjoy enjoy seeing well i think that is also what was such a, such a success about the first series was not just the licking hands but the digressions into the mundanity of her fashion choices or her relationship with her boss and yeah. the way that they have a familial relationship but also talk about really mundane things like food and so everything is not just about the chase and the killing and the crime it's also about these sort of weird tangential aspects yeah. of their mundane lives yeah no absolutely even though i think as soon as villanelle's life <laughs> becomes mundane that's when she starts to play up and right. and get a bit a bit naughty but um she can't help but fuck with people no. right sorry if, like I, yeah. i'm allowed to swear corporate <laughs> has given me the approval no she loves it i think yeah. it's 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 the it's the witnessing that as well i think that the the control that she can see that she then has over people i think that's what she really thrives off you know it's like a She's kind of like a snake, more like just she just lures them in, and I think it's that luring in that she she gets a power trip off, and it's it's control. Everything with her is about about control. What was your? We may have talked about this last time, but I I, I don't think we did. What was your audition like? Like, what do you think you did or said that made them think that's our our villanelle? God, I don't know. That's a question for them, I think. But um, I just remember I was on holiday in Barcelona. I'd been to a musical festival, actually, so I wasn't in a hurry. <laughs> I was on, like, a five-day hangover. And I was like, okay, right, I've got this 13-hour flight to L.A., Good for you. I've got to. I've got to do it. I've just got to. I've got to deliver. Like I don't want to get a 13-hour flight back to Liverpool and be kicking myself. So I just. I I I, I knew my lines. Sounds basic, but I just knew what I needed to to do. And then, to be honest, it was it was 
being in the room with Sandra, where it all kind of came together, like within five minutes of us meeting each other, that it was just like we trusted each other, and she gave me so much of her time and and energy, and um, it was at that moment where I, I when I left the room, I thought if I don't get it, I'll be devastated, and I will not be watching Killing Eve. <laughs> but I was I was also like I know that I couldn't have done any more. And I was at peace with that because I felt like we'd done like a day's film and, you know, it was... Um, but like if you didn't productive. get it, it'd be totally out of your control. It wouldn't yeah. be anything well, that you Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I was like. I was like, for me, you know, and sometimes you get auditions wrong. Sometimes you're like, nailed it. And then they're like, no. <laughs> and then, so you can you can judge things wrong. But um, I just felt like, right, if I don't, then it's, you know, it's exactly that. It's, it's out of my hands. Did you have all the scripts for the first season when you started shooting the first season? No, I think we had like the first maybe three. Um, yeah, you kind of, you do a block, which is like two episodes, and then you get um, the rest of the block's episodes as you as you go along, um, which is always nice, because it's a surprise. You know, I was always thinking, what's Phoebe going to have me doing next, um, which was great. Going into the um, second season, you know, one of the things that are gr that's great about second seasons of shows is that everything's been established and you can now expand the world and expand the characters a little bit. And oftentimes writers end up writing for what they know their actors want to do and are excited to do. Were there any conversations with you and the, and the showrunner about where Villanelle would go and what would happen? They always ask me, but what I enjoy is like, that's not my expertise. You know, like I, I admire. About writing. your what? Like that's not like I'm not a writer. Like the the, the stuff that they they bring up always. Did you say expertise? Me. Yeah. But you said it in your wonderful accent. I just wanted to hear it again. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, no, it was really amazing. It just took me a minute. You like what? Um, expertise. So I like to leave it to them. Um, now, if we come back for a third season, yeah, you've got some ideas. I got some feelings. You've got a notebook of ideas that they're gonna go. Oh, thank yeah. you. I got one or two. <laughs> but um, no, that's the joy about working with writers is that, like, when we finished series one, I was like, mm, I don't know how we can we can come back from this. Like, what on earth are they gonna do? And then, lo and behold, you get episode one, and you're like, that's what we're gonna do. So. Were you nervous about that though? Because Ep series one was such a complete package. I think yeah. even as a viewer, it was like, oh, I hope they come back, but I'm satisfied. That was fantastic. Yeah. 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 It's it's always nerve-wracking, especially now, because the great thing about season one, everything was surprise. No one was expecting anything, and now everyone is expecting everything. Um, so, uh, you know, when you're filming, you can switch that off and, you know, focus on the work, but now that it's coming out, it's like, okay, you know, you start getting a little bit... Um, anxious you just want people to enjoy it as much as as they did but you know these women these characters all of the characters are um in a different place you know there's so much that happened within series one that they're all kind of changed in different ways and um you know it was also the wonderful thing about having emerald like of course when you you know you you're getting a new writer there is part of you that the panics especially because phoebe is so incredible but Emerald gets that tone and that the humor and the darkness and that's right. You have you guys do have a new showrunner. Yeah, this, with this Emerald series. Fennell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know she's her own person. She's a, a, a incredible writer in her own right, and she brings a different energy with her. So uh, it's something that we've all um, embraced. I think the show does a really great job of in the first two episodes that I've seen resetting the what the expectations are going to be. Not expectations of good or bad, but of where this story is going to go and how it's going to how it's going to get there. Like, whereas in the first, the first episode of the first series, you're murdering right away. Yeah. And in this, it's a little bit different in terms of the setup. Yeah, well, I guess people n n already know now what she's capable of. Yeah. And like I said, she is in a very, like, uh, the, the, she's trying to stay alive. Like, there's no question about it. So that is um, on her top of the priority list. Let's just say that. Um, so yeah, it is a bit. It is different, but I think you know when you're st you're you know you're on series one, you're very much setting up everything. Um, whereas I guess in series two, the people are familiar, so you don't really have a need to do that. You can kind of just play with them a yeah. little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is a stop me if this is a spoiler. There is a guest star in one of the in one of the first two episodes. Can we talk about who the guest star is? Yeah, I Not think we the can. Story, it's been released. That oh, he's it's been in released. it. Yeah. Okay. Julian Barrett. Julian, yes, of Mighty Bush and uh, so many wonderful 
so many wonderful shows. He's the greatest guy ever. Nathan Barley's my favorite show that he was a part He's, of. I see. Well. I didn't. I hadn't seen Mighty Boosh, but the the whole crew were like going crazy. And I was like, oh, I really need to. Um, Did you go watch any of it? To see this, I watched a bit of it. Yeah. Did you watch the first episode where he fights the kangaroo in the in the boxing room? No, I I, I feel like he was. They were wrapped in tin foil. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that not the kangaroo though? That's I not can't the kangaroo, but that is like yeah, that's yeah, mighty book. absurd. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I I spent a lot of time with him for um, the second episode in particular. And he's such a, I mean, he's an amazing writer yeah. in his own right, yeah. as well as a hilarious actor. Um, but you had no, you had you hadn't really seen him in anything. No, before? like I met him for rehearsals, and um, it was like the best week of, of, of filming, um, especially Damon Thomas, who directed the last two episodes of series one he was directing. And there was, um, he, Damon really encourages you to, to take risks and be silly. And then, and then everyone just starts getting silly and, then, and, and just trying out things. And then that's when we have fun. And I feel like when we have fun, it shows so much um, well, that's camera. exactly what you want to do with someone like Julian Barrett. Yeah, who's well. hilarious. So yeah. there was just so many, um, you know, the, the, at one point I remember all the crew were just in fits of giggles and it was such a lovely atmosphere. You know, it's that's when I realized I'm so lucky to do. Well, there's that I great do. line where you're literally just asking him for medication and he goes, could I have five minutes of peace? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's this, like the best line. This mama's boy that plays with dolls yeah. who can't handle any kind of relationship whatsoever. But also the, you know, I don't want to give away too much, but he's very unassuming, which I think is just so perfect for how the how the the story um, goes. Um, and we also have th this is the amazing thing is like we now have this luxury of incredible actors. Like there's more throughout the series who want to come in wow. and um, like oh like want to meet an awful death, <laughs> and I'm like I have the you know the honor yeah. of. Um, of giving them that. Well, that's one of the, one of the most fun things about this series is that your character provides just a series of short films mm. within the whole show. Yes, there's this overarching story, but every episode there's a new person yeah. that you have to kill or multiple people. And within that, the show has always been incredible. And I think back always to the sort of Italian estate in series one, mm -hmm. where you, I think, do you poison that man, if I remember? Or you stab him in the eyes, maybe? Stabbed him in the eye, yeah, stabbed with poison. Eye, with poison. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. You got really it. really <laughs> got to get it done there, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, it was a hairpin. Hairpin. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's such a wonderful short film within this within the larger uh, whole series, and the show sort of provides that for you with all these guest stars and people that uh, Villanelle has to murder. Yeah, well, everyone's like, you know, do you make a lot of friends on set? And I'm like, no, they're all dead. Like, everyone's in for a couple of days and, and then goes, um, so we don't have enough time to do that. But it's true. It definitely feels like when you're with Villanelle, you're kind of transported. You know, the show's kind of split into two, but, like, within series two, they kind of... They definitely merge a little bit more. A little sooner? Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm, I don't know how soon, but they definitely they definitely have to merge. They merged in series one as well, but it was near the end where they started kind of yeah. coming together. Once they had come together and you were doing all this work with Sandra, mm -hmm. was it kind of hard going back to series two and sort of splitting up again? Well, not not really, because so much time had passed. Yeah. Um, what did feel bizarre, though, was that like we had to pick up right from where we left off. I think it's like 30 seconds later. Mm -hmm. um, and she's so ill <laughs> physically. Like, I just remember like there was like two weeks of me just like hyperventilating and heavy breathing. And I was like, I'm so done with this, uh, <laughs> with this illness. Um, so like to, to have to pick up from that energy was quite... Um, not tough, but it was just, you know, that was kind of challenging in itself. But um, the women had to, they have to separate in that moment because one Villanelle needs to to get away. And so does Eve, you know, but um, yeah, Villanelle's, <laughs> Villanelle's scarfed. What, uh, when did you decide to be an actress? When? Yeah. Um, it feels like ages ago. I don't know. When you were I, a kid or? Yeah, when like yeah. through my teens, I, I was lucky enough to like be doing the odd job here and there but I think when I was like 13 yeah maybe around 13 that was when someone said to me you know you can do this for a living and I was like what and then, and then they said yeah you can get an agent and you can get headshots and I was like okay and my mum and dad were like if you want to do it like we'll support you 100% um, but like 
like, because my dad used to be really a good at football, and he's very honest in saying that when he got to his teens, he, like, then got interested in going out and drinking and being with his friends, and he's just said, you know, if you're going to do it, do it. Don't do it half-heartedly. So um, that's what I, I'm trying to do. And when, um, when you started acting, I mean, do, were there parts that you feel like helped build you up to this kind of role? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like with every job, you learn something new. Uh, I did a drama in England called 13, which was like my first lead role. That was for the BBC. Um, and that was where I kind of realized the responsibility that you have leading the show, not just to do a good job, but also like your morale and how you treat the crew and your punctuality. And uh, so that really um, shaped me in, in, in that kind of way. But I think each job you learn something, something new. What have you learned from Killing Eve? What I've learned from Killing Eve is to take risks, mm -hmm. like find freedom in things, like be, try and be fearless as much as you can. I think we worry so much about like what people think or, you know, and especially when you're in a, like for me, crew shows. So before you do a scene, you'll rehearse the scene with the director and then you'll do a crew show and all the crew come up and line up and they're like, waiting for you to show them what you're gonna do and you're like, oh my God. So that's always like the most nerve wracking. Um, kind of your first audience and it's not their job to even really be an audience for no. you. It's their job to sort of technically figure out how they're gonna do everything around you. But it's still the first people that you're performing for. Yeah, right? and I also like, I really value the crew's, um, like what they think. I really care what the crew thinks because I think you know when you're a, when you're a part of a show like Kill and Eve, you could just sense that the whole crew was so proud and excited by, by what they were um, were making, and and that's what you wanna that's what you want on every set, you know. Yeah. What do you think it was? Do you think they could see in the writing and the performances that what they were making, and also I guess you know if you're on the technical side, the directing, even just in the pilot you can see right yeah. away that there's something special to it. I mean, even the, you know, the, the cinematography, the, the lighting, the, the directing, everything would just seem to be coming together so nicely. I think the, the writing is phenomenal. You know, I mean, I speak about Phoebe so much, but I just, <laughs> I really love her. Amazing. <laughs> she's, she's incredible. A, she's a genius. Yeah, she's like, there's only one Phoebe Waller-Bridge and there only ever will be. She's. Oh, she's the best. Anyway, um, so... Performing live from down the street yeah. right now in New York City. <laughs> it's really great. It's really fantastic. Um, so, yeah, we we all just sense that. And um, and then the editing, you know, editing is a huge part of it. And the music, like, I had no idea what the music was going to be. And, you know, even the titles when you're in a, in a different um, location. I think it all... You can't have... You must have had such an experience watching it for the first time, just thinking like, oh, I'm in something really cool. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's like the first, like actually my, my Mad Fat Diary was pretty cool, I feel like, in my opinion. That was my cool little show when I was younger. Um, but yeah, this was like, well, just to be a part of something that everyone is talking about. Um, I've never had uh, this kind of reaction before to a show. Is it hard to take risks as Villanelle, though, in performance? Because, I mean, even if the writing kind of calls for it, the main component of Villanelle is that she's a steely-eyed killer and stoic. So how do you find that place in those moments where you can take big, silly, goofy risks with her? I feel like that for me is the trust I have in the director. Mm -hmm. Again, speaking about Damon, I trust him 100%. And I know if I do something that is too much, he'll go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in a nice way, you'll go. <laughs> and then, and I'm like, cool, that's fine. But um, it's, you. I, I feel as well, like, I don't know whether I've drilled this into my own head or as actors, we believe that, like, the only good acting has to be, you know, everything's emotional and serious and whispered and, and um, you whispered. know, less, you know, but you know what I mean? Like, less is more, like, blah, 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 blah. blah. And, and, and what I learned from this was, like, actually, as long as there is still truth in what you're doing and authenticity, you can really run and um, make... Um, bold choices. I think also like people like it. People are like her in real life. The personalities, you know, how flamboyant they are, how loud they are. They're, all her faces are my facial expressions. That's 
my mum and dad can can vouch for that. All her weird faces are definitely. <laughs> definitely your faces. Yeah, 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 they're mine. <laughs> uh, I sometimes don't actually know what my face is doing, and then I'll watch <laughs> watch a scene back, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> um, so yeah. Do you have a a favorite outfit that you've had to wear so far? Series one or series two? Uh, all together. All together. Um. I mean, what I love about the second season is she's been stripped of all her luxury and she finds herself in a hospital in Paris and she befriends a young boy who is in the bed next to her and um, she he kindly borrows her a pair of his pyjamas. Age 10, actually, to be precise. Um, and I remember seeing the fabric for them and I was like, whoa, they are very unforgiving. Um, and I, I wore them for a very long time, but they're actually brilliant. Like when, when I've seen them in the still pictures, there's something so fantastic about this, this, this woman who is in such an awful place and she's parading like, around. And but the colors, they look like a Lichtenstein painting or something. No, they look so like pop art. It's and hilarious. No, I know. And, and I remember like seeing loads of different fabrics for, it was a whole thing. It was a whole uh, pajama conversation. Because um, I remember seeing that stretchy fabric and I was like, no way. And they were like, mm -hmm. what about the what's your What's your favorite from the first season? Can I guess? Is it the big float? Like, You're wrong. Flowy <laughs> it was one of them. It was one of them. But I think my favorite costume from series one was the suit that I killed Bill in. There was something about that that all came together. It, you know, I think it was one being in Berlin. I felt so comfortable in that suit. I think also as well that was like episode five, and I, I was starting to really find her, and I just kind of, kind of rocked it a little bit. At least I felt so. Um, and then also just seeing that scene where she she um, she kills him in the nightclub was was so kind of um, shocking even to me. I I felt like Villanelle had. <laughs> gone one step too far on that one um so yeah i think that the suit i like when she goes one step too far too many steps too far because that is the character she is a murderer yeah. and she's psychotic yeah. you can't have her be like you can only have her be cute and fun for too long before the tiger bites yeah i yeah. think that's the thing she should never be underestimated and while we discovered the humanity in her um you know, someone asked me the other day. She has not discovered her own. No, but I think she thinks she knows what love is. And I think that's what has affected her so much about this relationship with Eve. Like, I think she, com she, she f has convinced herself that she knows what love is and what human connection is. And she so desperately wants to believe that. And that's where all the kind of wires are crossed. You think she's in love or loves? No, I think she, I think she thinks she is. I don't see a difference between whether or not someone thinks that they are or they are. Oh. Love is That's subjective, deep. right? Yeah. Let's get into it. I yeah. Mean, let's talk about love, guys. <laughs> um, I mean, who knows? We shall see. Uh, yeah, let's get deep with a Twitter question. Jody. Oh. Yeah, oh, these are so deep. How do you feel about having such a passionate fan base? I love it. <laughs> I do, I do. I believe you. It just would I be mean, funny if you said it's awful. No, I know. Yeah. Um, one thing that I've, like, the fan art that has been drawn blows my mind. Um, and just the support, like, like I said, this show grew from word of mouth. Um, and we're so incredibly lucky to have, have the, the fan base that they have this very passionate, yeah. which I love. Uh, I think we have some questions in the audience now, right? Who was the uh, first question? Yeah. Hey there. Hi. Um, Hello. You're right. The, uh, the audience is very passionate. And, um, oh, my God, I love you so much. Oh. And, <laughs> yeah, I love you very much. And uh, <laughs> I'm so proud of, like, everything that you've done. And I'm so excited to see you continue. Like, I just know you're going to kill everything. So, Thank you. amazing. Um, okay, so the question I have for you, um, I just want to know where in the world Villanelle found the nerve to get into bed with Eve without washing her hands <laughs> after coming home from prison, a kidnapping, and an attempted murder, like. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like there was a lot going on in that um, moment that washing her hands was the last thing on her mind. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't wash her hands. <laughs> no, she definitely does. She's a hygienic lady. Um, I mean, I think that was the last thing on her mind. But I see your point. I will have a word with her. Thank you. Thank you. I will ask her. Okay, awesome. Uh, 
Uh, next question. <gasps> Hi. Hello. I was oh, hello. I was wondering how you feel about breaking into like the Hollywood movie scene like this upcoming year. Have you broken like that? in? No, not yet. <laughs> I'm working on it. Kick down the door? No, I'm. well, this year I'm going to do my first feature film, which is, um, thank you. Yeah, I felt like I've been ready and it's happening and, and uh, yeah, it's very exciting. But again, like what I'm most excited about is it's something I've never done before. So I imagine and know I'm going to learn a lot and uh can i ask what it is yeah it's a, a film called free guy which sean levy is directing for fox and it's um right broken that's big yeah yeah i know <laughs> I'm, I'm like um so ryan reynolds um plays the part of this guy who um seemingly lives in the real world but he finds out the uh, he is in fact a background character within a video game um and we meet within the game i have an avatar called molotov um and they kind of help each other save um save the game because the code's been stolen and the his world's gonna end and is it she helps him stop motion or is it motion capture or are you guys i think it's performing i together? think it's uh, i think we're performing it oh. i mean those questions i haven't really delved into um i was just like thank you thanks for having me <laughs> um so we don't um those details i don't have yet but i Page feel like one, it's you're on action. fire for the whole movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's incredible no it's incredible what what i'm looking forward to is like within the game she is this avatar sorry i'm like i've completely ignored you um and then um with she in the real life she's a girl called millie so there is a definite contrast between her avatar and who she is in the real world which i think is, is really interesting especially in this day and age of of who we present ourselves as um online you know and and yeah should be fun uh next question uh hi hi so i as intense as she is i was wondering if you relate to villanelle in any way and if it has brought up anything within you that you weren't sure that existed before yeah i i, I do relate to her that's what i loved about when i read the script was there were moments where I was like, I see why she did this. Even within episode one of series two, there was something that happened, which was kind of huge and kind of awful. But, uh, I remember but um, there is a moment where you see why she did it. Um, what I've kind of taken from her and learned from her is like, she's very honest, sometimes too brutally honest. But that's definitely something I've took into my uh, own life of, I think I'm a lot more honest with myself and, and like my relationships and, and, and how I am. Um, I also eat as much as she does. <laughs> There's one thing, like everyone was so surprised by, she's like, she eats so much and it's so true because like you always see actors like flicking peas around their plate when they're doing a dinner scene, which I get because we had a scene on, on series two where I had to eat pasta and I ate pasta from 9 a.m. till about 6 p.m. You didn't spit it out? No. <laughs> That's what Edie Falco <laughs> says about James Gandolfini on The Sopranos, that he would eat so he would eat all of the pasta and they would have to shut down shooting because he would fall asleep. He would go into food. Yeah, it was it was day. grim. It was really grim. Uh, but also <laughs> because the way that they shot it was she's eating it. And I mean, maybe I could have spat it out. Actually, that's but a no good point. No one told you. No. They're like, yeah, but yeah, I didn't. They're like, yeah, Jody, I, keep eating. I think I think towards the end of the day, I probably did did uh, did start doing that. But yeah, I was committed. No, that's good. And I'm saying you don't you don't have to spit it out if you don't want to, but I think they no, I, yeah. I really should have. <laughs> uh, one more. Um, hi Jody. Hi. I'm with you totally on the fan art. Like I love all the fan art. Um, I even have one of the pins from one. Oh my god, amazing. Yeah, they're um they're so good. And also congratulations on all your awards and the fifteen BAFTA nomination. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I know, it's incredible. So I wanted to ask you, um, since you and Sandra's Eve, you you don't actually share a lot of scenes in season one, mm -hmm. yet the two of you have such great chemistry. So I was wondering how do you portray that and does it get easier in season two? I believe that the, the absence, you know, like the, the time that we spend apart actually really helps with the tension, um, which sounds strange because I get asked this sometimes and, and, and you would think that we would have to spend a lot of time together to kind of build this bond. But like I said, within the, the first audition, we, we found that and the separation kind of created a, um, you know, a, a real tension when we got to those scenes. There was a real, you know, it was quite palpable. Even the crew could feel it. It was like, whoa, this is a, this is a big moment. Um, 
and yeah, obviously me and Sandra know each other a lot more now because we do press and, and everything else. So um, it just continues t to grow, but you're lucky sometimes when you meet certain actors and it's just, it's like that with Kim, it was just there. That's what I was gonna say. I mean, when they auditioned you, they auditioned you with Sandra, yeah. right? And so that whole audition was about That's seeing That's the purpose what, of that, yeah. yeah like what kind of, even though you guys weren't gonna be on screen together till no. episode five of that series, they wanted to make sure that there was something there. Yeah, because yeah. the, the audience need to feel it, you know? So that's why I'm so happy that you, you said that you felt that because it was like, yes, these women don't spend a lot of time together, but the audience need to feel this connection or this this kind of force that is bringing the two of them together. Um, and yeah, so that's the purpose for, for like a, they call them chemistry, it's why I don't know if anyone calls them them anymore, but to, is for chemistry to see how, how you and, and, and the other person um, connect. Did you feel when you went into the room, outside of the work that you were doing, did it feel like there was some sort of, innate strange chemistry between the two of you yeah i think i think i think so um definitely as soon as i went in it there was just a really chilled energy and and we went over it loads of times and was like you know do you want to do it again is there anything you you want to change or um you know she's very patient and and just very present like I, I felt like we'd done so much groundwork within that scene that when we came to shoot the scene within the series, we didn't rehearse it. Usually with a scene like that, that is filmed over two days, you would get together on the weekend and like do a day's run through of the lines or whatever. But we kind of find so much within that one audition that when we came round to it, we were like, we want to go in it kind of um, as we are now. Yeah, so that was cool. And when it came to this series and when the two of you finally come together, that's not a spoiler. I haven't seen it. I'm assuming that's what happens. I'm trying to think of when that happens. Did you uh, did you rehearse it or did it feel the kind no. of the same way? Well, it's under very different circumstances. Let's just say that. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. No. Um, I love the show so much. Congratulations. It's Thank you so much. maybe the best thing on television right now. It's so I'll fantastic. Take that. Thank you guys. Uh, Jody, it premieres April seventh on BBC America. Is that today? Is today BBC America and AMC. And, and AMC Killing Eve. Jody Comer, everybody, let's hear it. Thank you.